going to call the meeting to order at 8.08 .08 and apologize to those of you who've been waiting. Sort of out of our control, but I'm sorry. Um, and welcome, Tim. Welcome. Um, revisions to the agenda. I was just going to add uh, um, to approve the creation of the uh, creation and membership of the Act 49 committee to that to the action agenda. Is that okay to do that? Yeah. yeah not a you can use Robert's rules. You can add whatever you want. Okay. Um, public comments. A motion to approve the minutes of November 28th. So moved. Kari and a second. Second. Carl, comments, questions, changes? At least you do a really nice job. Everybody all set? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Let's go down to the reports to the board and go right to the students. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Um, so we met last week, right? We did. <laughs> it wasn't very long ago. Not much fun to talk about. Um, the first thing that we want to talk about is we had our winter concert yesterday for, was it just high school? Um, the high school and middle school are doing the new thing this year, so band. Yeah. And Blam went to Berlin Elementary today, and we talked with the faculty, with all the teachers we had. Shelly Vermilia came, and so we broke in half, and half of the staff went and talked with uh, Ginger, Devante, Izzy, and I were, all four of us were there, and they, half of the staff went and talked to us, and half the staff was with Shelly Vermilia, and then we switched. Who's Shelly? Sorry. Um, she's Zora and Dashiell's mom, and she teaches at, she's a professor at St. Mike's on like, racial and gender studies. Okay. And and yes. other places. Yes. And yes. Many other places. Yes. Yes. And she's in teacher education. Yeah. Um, and then the next thing is, I correct me if I'm wrong here, but I had um, a conversation with Brian Fisher last week, um, and he mentioned, is there a potential food service budget cut? Is that on? The, could that happen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so sort of just from the student perspective, I wanted to share about um, the food here at U32. So basically, since Brian came, whenever that was, like two or three years ago, um, I noticed that just the quality and variety of school lunches has really improved. Um, I know from speaking with him that not necessarily more students are getting school lunch, but those who do get lunch are just having a better experience, and I just really like to speak to the fact that um, Brian's brought a lot to the program and that I don't I'm no like financial expert, but at least from my perspective, I don't think that is the place that money should be cut from. I, I'll beat you to it, but go ahead. <laughs> I, do you mind if I interrupt just oh, for a moment? For I won't break your train of thought. Um, how do you think more students can be induced to get lunch? Yeah, so I actually talked to Brian about that last week because he came up and talked to me after the meeting. So from my understanding, part of the problem is that students will just get like a slice of pizza or like one of the like grab and go wraps or whatever, but what they have to do for um, the food service to get money back from the government is getting what's called a meal deal. So they have to get like all the components of like a healthy meal. And I think the problem is that students just don't do that. And I think if they were made more aware of like the impact that that has on our school, they would. Like I've talked to a couple of kids and been like, hey, like did you know if you get these extra things, like it actually gives our school money from my understanding. And I think that Brian's worked to have students be more involved in the process of school lunch. Like he's had, he had a call back either this year or last year about, with um, vegetarians and vegans about making more options. Um, so I think that in order to get more kids to get school lunch, we just need to like make them more aware of the variety. Because I think a lot of kids, there are so many things we can get and they're just simply not aware of it. And I think that's why we haven't seen more kids getting lunch. Thanks. That was my question. <laughs> it's, uh, it's great to get some feedback from actual students. All we know is that once a month we get a meal that's actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
you know, when we talked about there are two sides of the budget, the money that comes in and the money that goes out. And if we don't want to cut the money that's going, at, that's going out to pay those people, because that's what helps make the quality, and he made that very clear, that we've got to figure out how to get more money coming in. And if you look at the percentage of kids that have taken lunches over the last, I forget what it is, four or five years, it's dropped precipitously. And so in, we also have fewer students, and a smaller percentage of them are taking lunch. So there's a lot less money coming in. So in my mind, getting more kids to eat the lunch would be great. Also for the budget, I know a lot of students, not just Blaine, but uh, other students who are also wondering about the second flagpole or the new flagpole and whether that was going to be incorporated into the budget too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's not something that yeah. you don't have to, yeah, it's not, it doesn't come or go. It's a small enough amount of money that if yeah. they want to do it, they can find the money. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So every um, winter slash fall, I guess now, the middle schoolers, is it eighth grade? Seven. Seventh graders do Lotus Lake Adventure Days, so we're also having those um, this week, and I remember them from middle school, and they're just super fun. You like, do all these games outside, and you bond with your TA, so that's happening later this week on, looks like, Thursday and Friday. Oh, yeah. tomorrow's Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> that's When did they go from three separate plays to one big play? Was that they used to do each core did a play? Oh, this is stage six. This is stage six. Oh, it's yeah. not. Yeah. Oh, play, so it's like. Okay, I'm sorry, yeah. I misunderstood. The yeah. core is like you have to do the play, and then the that's what I thought she was talking about. Like extra okay. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> so that's kind of all we have to report again. It's only been a week since we last. You did a lot. Day. Do you want to talk about the second flagpole? Do you, is there anything that... I'm so weather's our bigger problem right now um, in getting one put out there. But we, we've got the funds set aside in our capital budget. We just have to get the process. Going. And so the idea is we will do it. So yeah. we are getting second slide that's, that's our goal. Will it be like the only one out there or will it be an addition to that? No, there'll be two flagpoles. It'll be the second flagpole. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so is it like, is the Black Lives Matter flag going on that one? I, I just wasn't aware of it so we're working towards getting a second flagpole. One one flagpole. Actually, we would probably be erecting a taller flagpole that would carry the American flag and the Vermont flag and use our existing flagpole for student organizations, as outlined in the in the flag, the, uh, flag policy. Yeah. Yeah. And the thought behind that is that when the flags go to half mast, if there are two flags on the existing flagpole, they get pretty low. Is that yeah. a correct? The Black Lives Matter flag is. Would only, uh, any third flag on that flagpole is almost on the ground. That happens. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And you're welcome to stay or go at any time you need to go. <laughs> Somebody's mother's back there. Before they leave, I would love to hear the story of Lucy Spud. Oh, <laughs> she doesn't mind sharing it. Oh, my foot. Oh, no. Oh, um, it might, I got x-rays yesterday. It's some sort of, like, stress-type reaction. Um, so we're still figuring that out. For the meantime, I'm having a blast in this booth, so. <laughs> <laughs> On the snow? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Tim. Okay, before you, before you yeah. leave. It sounds like you have solved the flagpole stuff, but have you come up with a plan for what is gonna go on to the flagpole and the standards and guidelines? So a month ago, maybe, or I can't, recently we passed a flag policy that outlines that we will accept student requests for flags and they have to support the student learning outcomes and the mission and the vision of the school. Um, and the, there's a procedure that the administration has to follow to bring that flag request to the board. And it's not. It has, it's not a, a doctor policy that's written down for anybody for like these girls or myself or you to read yet. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it we is, passed it. It is, it is a, it's a, is, all the procedures have not been finalized, but, we're, but they're pretty, I mean. We, we, do you have it in there? Because yeah, I have so it. That's what I'm going. Okay, I have it in my bag. But if it, you don't it, have it. The policy's been adopted and 
Uh, we were charged for right as you were just saying, Stephen, to put together the written policy. Oh, okay. The written procedures. Um, procedures. So here's the policy right here uh, it's a, that we have, and it says the criteria the board will include in making decisions on flying flags that request the flag must come from student groups, which must be able to articulate the importance of flying the flag. The flag must represent ideas that are linked to and support the current WC, U32 mission goals and student learning outcomes. The flag must bring no harm to other groups of students at U32. The request to fly the flag other than the United States and Vermont flag must be made annually to the school board and the school board may dictate the length of time the flag is to be flown. If appropriate, the board will invite and comment from the community, including students, about the proposal. School administration, in consultation with the U32 board and school community, will develop operating procedures that include criteria for reviewing requests from students' groups to raise the flags. I know Jody and Stephen, but I, the reason I'm saying Jody is because I remember seeing it from you a little bit. Of, we had some draft procedures that just hadn't been finalized yet. But I thought that the point of all this was that these students were going to make their own groups up and then have their own flags on the pole, not bringing outside sources, flags, organizations, and things like that. It was that student groups could make the request for a flag. And it didn't specify which flag, whether it's theirs or that they created or existing flags. But that they have to. I wish my hand was here. I'm sorry. I, I feel very ignorant. But she read, and it cannot be another business, organization, nonprofit, anything like that. And that's why Blam is acceptable if they come up with their own logo and all that. But the other flag is not. So we didn't address exactly. what the flag would look like. And that that's actually. Where the well, that never came up in our discussion and at all. I, and that's why I said three, four weeks ago that uh, let's settle it, not go there. Let's get flagpole, and then we can move on to this issue later. And I believe it's been thrown under the carpet. I'm sorry, I never. I, I didn't understand that. I never understood that there was a, it, that, that you were concerned about. I don't know. I don't know what you call them, <laughs> you know, student design flags and but those representing the other sure, I'm pretty sure I can speak for her. She's not here, but she's got everything highlighted and everything. It cannot be a nonprofit organization. It has to be a school functioning thing that's brought up by girls and guys here. But it, our policy doesn't address and I never, I never even thought about that, whether um, the flag I, is. It is, and I believe Diane showed me where you guys made it an adopted policy and wrote it down. And well, I, this is what we, what was the date we adopted it? Uh, you adopted it on November 7th. So, and we had read it, we, I had written it one time, it came back, we made a few changes, it came back again, and I think the second time we adopted it, or one second more time, time? Second time you did it to yeah. like keep this. this and I could, I could go back in my it. bag I back there and find that. The I think there may be some confusion around who creates the flag versus who could bring forth the idea of the flag. Well, and that's. And I think yeah. that, that may be where our so communication you, breakdown was. So you agree that a nonprofit organization that is able to do that? No. no, no, no. I'm not, only, I haven't only, had that discussion. With but in our, go ahead, Carl. Only a student group can make the. I, I hear, wait, let me finish. Yeah. Only a student group can come to us to make the request to put up a flag. We There's did not write into the policy in any way, shape, or form directions as to what that flag would be. That would be something that the that the process would, the procedure would then address when a group brought a request for a flag to us. So we did not strictly rule out an external or a flag from an external source, um, but we also didn't necessarily say that it would go up either. 
it would, it would have to meet the criteria that we laid out in the policy. I'm just looking back in other yeah. drafts of the policy. Yep. So, so it was the month that. before. I'm looking at, I just went and read uh, the 24th of October. And there was something down, kind of three quarters of the way down, about <clears throat> it had to be legitimate student groups. We took out the word legitimate, but then at the bottom it said something about go down to the bottom paragraph. The school administration and Constitution okay. Youth Board and the school community will develop operating procedures that include criteria reviewing requests from individuals and or groups to raise flags. So and that's I, where we took out individuals. Yeah, so hold on. And we said student groups. I'm going to the meeting before. So uh, so here's a draft that's much different. It just at least in length. I have to read <laughs> to say <laughs> in content. And I'm, I'm sorry if there was a misunderstanding. I, I remember a conversation about the groups, too, of whether outside groups could make yes. a request to the board. And so we decided we no. Decided and we changed that. Groups. Yep. So Did it you have, said this is second girl that you decided no. It has to be a student group that makes a request. That's what my whole point is. And the black flag is not a student group. No, but the student group made the request to fly the Black Lives Matter flag. That's what our policy, that's what we passed, that a student group can make a request to fly a flag, and we can accept it. We couldn't have so, the, um, I don't know, so if, you know, the National Guard come in and say, we want to fly our flag on your flagpole, because it's not a student group. But if someone came here and gave us reason, and I'm totally making this up. You know, if some student group came in and said, the National Guard flag represents this and this and this to us, I don't even know if they have a flag. And the board said, it goes along with the learn student learning outcomes and the mission and the vision and it doesn't cause harm and all, there are a couple other, they could raise, the student group could raise that flag. If it doesn't cause harm, is that's a hard one. It is a hard one. And so because that would be what's... that would be for the board to decide. And the procedures ask for um, consultation with student groups and with administration to figure out whether it causes and with the with the students to figure out whether it causes harm or not. I thought to stay away from all the drama and stuff that we were gonna help support the kids and all that their groups that they're building and creating inside the school, not outside the school. This doesn't preclude that. That could still certainly happen. We also talked about it would be easier. creating a U32 flag potentially. We did talk yeah. about that yeah. also. Which has been I think, one of the best things. So, and when we develop policy, we try to kind of think of a broad umbrella that gets across the meaning that we want. And then the procedure kind of sets up the criteria, the specific way that that's going to happen. And hopefully between that broad umbre umbrella of what we're trying to create in the school and the specific way that it does, will meet the needs of all the groups. And if a group comes and it doesn't fit the procedure or the, they think it does and they bring it to us and we don't, then we have the right to make that decision one way or the other. One question, I know it's late, we need to move on. But today the stock market went right through the roof, okay? So it, it, it's horrible. But let's just say that this school is about economics and things like that, okay? What if all of a sudden the world just wanted to really promote China? And all of a sudden we want to throw a China flag up there? So a student group would have to come to us to the board, first they'd have to go through the procedures with the administration, and then they'd have to go come to the board and be able to say that it supports the mission of U32, the vision of U32, the student learning outcomes of U32, it doesn't cause harm to others. There are two others, but I can't remember what they uh, are. We'll request the flag. Okay, so, so those are sort of the big criteria. Yeah. And, and I would say, just on in that regards, that a, the flag of another nation has different rules to follow anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, like yeah. there are other things that would be considered yeah. by administration in those kinds of cases. Yeah. So it's our, it's the school board's job to figure out 
when those requests come one by one, whether they fit with this policy or not. And it's up to the student group before they come to us to make sure they've fulfilled all of those criteria also. Thanks. And I'm sorry if there was misunderstanding. Sorry. Budget, draft two. <coughs> you guys want to talk to this? Yeah, we're sorry. Sorry. Um, I'm just going to hand, hand it right over to you. Thanks, Thank girls. You. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. So we're at the budget. Yeah, we're at the budget. So you, you gave I would us probably do better if I were asked questions right now. I, I, what we, well, what are the differences? Um, oh, well, the differences are that um, once we have now uh, made some changes to our estimates for um, assessments from uh, WCSU, um, also from the uh, CBCC from the Tech Center, along with the increases that we estimate through salary, health insurance, um, that we had uh, a need to reduce our budget um, by a fair amount. Um, I mean, we've really this this draft is so different than the last draft that it's hard to compare them directly. Um, there were some features that we had talked about already. We talked about food service. Yeah. Um, so if we were to include food service as part of our budget, um, we would have to add an additional 500,000. You mean the whole food service? If we did a whole food service, okay. we would have to um, add an additional 500, a little over $500,000 to the entire budget, which would put us over the threshold, which Bill can explain much better than I can. Yeah. Um, and so we, we did not include that as, as an option in this budget draft. Um, we also um, looked at food service overall. Um, we did not see where we could add an additional $70,000 of support without uh, cutting a faculty position um, because there are other cuts that are already within this budget to meet the board's request of a 2.99, or less than three. Um, budget and so um, we actually pushed forward in this budget as a recommendation to um, to eliminate one uh, position within food service um, we have a retirement happening this year so yeah. there would be um, there would, there would just be unfilled yeah attrition um, and does that do close to 70,000 um, it does no, no, yeah, no, no, but there are other things that we can take, that we can move towards in terms of, um, of trying to reduce that. I think one of the other concerns that, and, and Jonathan, you brought this up, is making sure that we support students. Um, so we do, I, I don't know if the board recalls, but at times we've asked the board to eliminate um, debt that existed because of students who were not able to pay. Um, we do that pretty regularly, and we make sure that kids um, are taken care of. We run a very small deficit now. There was a time where we were running about a $10,000 deficit with um, what students had purchased, students and staff, I should be clear, um, had purchased, but um, were running in the red. Um, and so uh, that's down into the two to $3,000 range now, and usually, um, what we see is a student who is um, who ends up on that list um, because they're not they don't have the funds. We typically uh, Brian is doing an excellent job. And let me just say this is an excellent job of contacting the family, getting the student approved for free and reduced lunch if necessary. Um, and that's typically the scenario is that that students run up a debt because they actually qualify, um, and then we typically write off the debt that was there. And that can be anywhere from you know, $20 to $200 is, is what we've looked at on individual students. But uh, I will say that, that it, Brian is very aware of making sure that um, if somebody needs a lunch, they get a lunch, um, or needs a breakfast, gets breakfast. Um, and he's worked with families to make sure that kids get qualified. That's and good. so I would also say that for those who are qualified, 
it's a code system. So yeah. even though I work here, I have money on my account, I go and punch in my code. You know, and it's and so the kids have their code system. I mean, you can pay with cash at the cash register as well, but yeah, yeah. there's a code system, and so that helps take away some of that stigma of you know who's getting a free lunch. I, and I've run paying. the register before. I can't begin to tell you who's free and reduced and who's not. Yeah, there's like, no, I, there's I, can, no way I can't no. tell running the register who gets a free lunch and who's paying for their lunch because they typically the kid will have a few dollars on their account. I mean, it's it's. It is, it's near impossible for you just to glance and tell. Um, you really have to know what's going on. So can we pause on this point of the food service for just a moment? The, so what you're telling us is you've reduced the food service expense by a position. Correct. And essentially we're, we'd be funding it at approximately the same level of the current year? Yes, so our budget shows the same level of funding for right. um, food service, which is about yeah. $31,000. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay so, so that's not what we asked for last time, but so we just pause and ask how people feel about, about that. And the reason you did that is because otherwise you couldn't hit this um, 3.3%. I could not hit that 3% or less mark without starting to eliminate teaching positions at that point. And we talked about that on Thursday and I was in full support. I said I would could not support fully funding at $100,000 as your superintendent with having to make academic cuts. Uh, although there is a line that says academic program minus 269, yeah. is that the special education? Does that correspond on the next page to the special education? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, you, you saw that big dip in the special yeah. education. Yes. Okay. So is that? So so just in terms of process, I think you, you guys made a decision in, in a draft form Correct. that we may have arrived at on our own. <laughs> what we, I think what we were asking for was put it in there, show us what it looks like, and then, and then offer us a, a sort of a menu of painful options that we could choose from. We and felt we like that there were so, ordered for us. So I'll tell you, man, I, I took the responsibility. I, you heard that loud and clear, Curry. I decided not to follow that. And I, and I, and I said that to Stephen, and he said, you know, when we were discussing this, I said, listen, we are, we are going to make, you know, we need, to, we are going to have to go into some academic areas and give you the budget that we recommend. We're, there are also other factors that I would say as we go through this budget, you're going to see that we, we did not know, actually we didn't even know at the time. Right. Um, and so when you asked us to go put together scenarios, we also didn't have full information as to some of the other places that were going to impact our budget. We didn't know until Thursday morning that we had a hundred and seventeen thousand dollar increase coming from CVCC. Mm -hmm. So we so we had to we had to put that into the mix to get down to three percent. And that's in here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's so a twelve percent. Oh, there's there's that for a twelve percent increase in their tuition. For, oh, okay. Tuition increase. Wow. So we we didn't we knew we did know here Wednesday night. Didn't know the dollar amounts, but we knew because you had sat through it, Kari, that we were changing the population shift that's happening for the Washington Central assessments. Yeah. So that came down to a positive for us. Uh, no, 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 no. It was another. Addition. Oh, I thought you said all these things were positive. They're no, all negative. These are all negative. They're Salary and benefit, tech center, and Washington assessment. That's negative. Those are all things that came back to us and hit us Thursday morning. Okay. So what did you take out of the budget? in order to lower the percent increase with all of these things go going higher. I just totally misunderstood that. Okay, so, um, <laughs> so where we, um, so we, uh, we, the biggest, the biggest spot that we reduced our budget in, um, in this was personnel that were not teachers. Um, and so we looked at um, across the school what positions did we have that were not directly impacting individual students or were an, a certified teacher position? <clears throat> and so the, what you see before you is you know, one of those spots is in food service. Right? Um, we also have within our uh, paraprofessionals, which support um, classrooms, not individual students, um, we reduced in that area as well, as well as saying that we would not fill a position that was um, coming from Berlin. So we have a student coming with 
a one-to-one -one need from Berlin, but as opposed to adding another position into our budget, we would absorb that into our existing staff. And so, um, so with, with that cut, so you see, I mean, the, the one line that you see the most is special ed programs is the one that, um, yep. that took the cut. Um, that also reduces some of our revenue, but more importantly, it reduces, um, it reduces our overall budget enough to get us close to the, we didn't actually, as you see, we got to 3.03. Um, so we didn't actually get below 3%. Um, I, I just like to probe again um, a thought that uh, I have to thank Kari for um, carrying on my behalf at a finance committee meeting before. And um, uh, looking back a, a couple of one or two SU board meetings ago, there was um, a project. There were pro projections for end of year fund balances for the, all the various schools and yeah. the SU. Mm -hmm. And um, added together... Um, 2.1 and 1.9 is about 1.9 mil right now. It's about 1.9 mil right now. Okay. So Rough numbers from you. I'm doing it from my head. Okay, yeah. Um, that's absolutely fine. Um, the, and I know we're in, a, we're in a, a hedging situation. We're not sure what necessarily what's going to happen. But if there is a merger, then those fund balances are going to be mm -hmm. merged as well. Um, so uh, the, the target fund balance for the merged district will be 4% of the... Yeah. Um, so Maybe. that would be uh, like 1.2? No, we're, we're right around the 4%. The target's probably going to be less because we probably don't need all that mm -hmm. fund balance. The problem is right now that our low, many of your fellow boards are talking about spending down their fund balances and not coming in with them. And so that's going to be a tough thing to do. Um, so we're trying to, I'm trying to figure out, it's kind of, I just don't, I can't tell you to depend on fund balance. Right, I understand. Okay? Because I just don't know, I mean already Doty last month decided to spend 60000 of their fund balance because feeling like they need to spend it for their voters because it was raised for the Doty budget. I have a different viewpoint than the board does because all this money is state money. It's not local town money, it's a state funded system. And so if there's a town in our, our district that raises enough taxes in their town to pay their education expenses. Mm -hmm. So it's all coming from different places. Mm -hmm. um, that could be a nice, Alan and I had a nice long debate on that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, just to speak to that, is the, <clears throat> I, we've talked about making this an orderly transition from a budgeting process that we try to do this as similarly as we have in the past mm -hmm. and to try to anticipate what the next board wants to do with its fund balances. I, I, I think we should behave as though we're creating our own unique budget and then they'll do what they want. Uh, understood and, and I think that's that's an excellent point. Um, I'm, I'm sort of just kind of testing um, because at the same time um, I think you mentioned that this next fiscal year is the last fiscal year for one of the bonds. Yeah. Um, so. 430. Four, 430. Um, so uh, anyway, I'm <coughs> what I'm just trying to feel out is whether um, you know, granted that we want to preserve as much as we can to for the um, for the track and for other needs, but. Um, if uh, if we could, you know, peel out one hundred fifty thousand to take to knock off one percentage on the. So you can do that, but you'll have a double bill of that. So yeah. if you take one hundred fifty, it's at three hundred thousand dollars. You'll have to increase next 2000, year. in two thousand in two thousand twenty one fiscal year, and as I said to you last meeting, you are one bond payment away from. When the bond ceases, bond payments right now do not count for your local spending to set your tax rate. Next year when that bond payment goes away, and we've talked about using that for other capital expenses, you will be at the threshold at a level, not service, level funded budget. 
So that's not including the raises from health care or from salary increases. So there will be definite cuts in 2021. So you can go ahead and do that, but we're just, it's the same, you're causing a worse problem for 2021 because now instead of being right at the threshold, you'll be $300,000 over the threshold. I'm looking three or four years down the road yeah, budget. Which is good. And the, this whole district is going to be in threshold. We have three schools right now that are in thre over the threshold spending limits with draft one's budgets. And we're looking at all of our districts in a year or two, just at the rates we've been spending. So well, it doesn't matter governance. We could be talking, it doesn't matter the governance. Mm -hmm. I want to really say that clearly. Mm -hmm. And I hope you're getting this on the video. It does not <laughs> matter governance. You can go combine, merge together or individual. <clears throat> we have a budget problem in the amount we're spending. So, and the state has, and it's gonna get, it's gonna get tighter faster because of the way the law was changed in 2015 to set the threshold limits. And it's based off the 2015 school year budget plus CPI. And CPI has been really low. This year right now it's a 2.9, which is the highest it's been in three or four years. And we've had increases much greater than CPI. Of course we have, because we're not a consumer. We're, right. we're a government agency. Right, 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 and that's right. And because we have set pieces that we have to pay. I mean, that, that is part of the, <coughs> yeah. you're right, Scott. It's part of yeah. the place, right? And, and I would I would add in with your permission is Good. that special education funding changes after this year as well, and we're not sure exactly how that's going to affect us uh, in its entirety. So special education funding is based upon a reimbursement formula now, so you see the reimbursements come in. Um, after this budget cycle, it becomes a, a grant, a block grant. And so that block grant amount is all we will receive. There is no excess. There is no, you know. So we're we need to begin to position ourselves to accept that reality as well, which is we will have lower revenue for our um, special education spending. So, so as we get more kids, so you see, we're juggling knives and chainsaws and all that fun <laughs> stuff, and we're throwing more in because the the changes that are occurring, while they're not all going to happen this year. We, we need as a school to start planning for those changes that are going to happen both in the, in the next budget cycle after this one, but also as we start to look at our overall numbers, which we've been, we've been really pouring over. Um, our kindergarten class is, a pro is 76 students right now in all of the kindergartens in our supervisory union. 76 total students. Um, as opposed to what we have been working from what do you think about our seventh grade class is 111 kids. So our classes are running, we, we average about 109 kids per grade level at U32. Um, the elementary schools average um, 98 students per grade level. And, and that actually declines the further out you get. Yeah. And so we have to start planning our school for every year being a reduction in the number of people who work here um, over the next decade. And so, Scott, I appreciate the idea of using the fund balance, but if we have to make up $300,000 when our enrollment drops again, yeah. we, we, we just, we're gonna, just we're gonna spiral down quickly in, in that yeah. case. And Scott, we, years ago, we had a discussion and decided we were not going to do that because it just, it didn't reflect our true spending. It kind of, it just inflated. It didn't, it wasn't fair. And the next year you're paying for it mm -hmm. twice. It's what Phil Scott did with the whole education yeah. budget. Well, you know, uh, kicked it down the road and said, here, we'll fund it with this. So, I mean, if you look at, if you look at the kindergartens, the past three years and four of the past five years are all under 100. Um, I mean, we've, this is our demographic projections that we get every year have been showing us that we're going to go down in size and we're headed for we're for our equalized pupils right now across the district are at 14 uh did, 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 where to put right 1439 
when I came, our equalized pupils were close to 1,700. And if this trend continues, we're headed for 11 to 1,200 kids. Uh, the trend is definitely continuing. Yeah. Um, and in fact, um, you know, this is maybe a bigger thing, but um, that's, the, that's the real crisis. There's mm -hmm. population loss in Vermont, <coughs> yeah. overall. Yeah. It's not um, just schools. Yeah, exactly. Um, can I ask a couple questions? Yes. So I guess in light of that, are we doing enough with this budget to reduce? Are we are we wasting a year that we could better position ourselves for this um, coming? I do not believe so because we can also see. So this is that long term planning. What we see are some retirements that are on the horizon for us. Um, we will certainly have some attrition. You know, there will be a few teachers that leave. We have to ask ourselves. At this point in time, should a teacher leave, do we really yeah. need to fill that position? Yeah. Like, where, how do we prioritize that need? Um, I will say that when we looked at our cuts, the one place that we tried to preserve um, within our budget um, the increase that, that existed there um, was in math. Um, so um, we do have a teacher on a one-year contract, but we have, we have tried to preserve in our budget to keep that teacher. Um, primarily based around the conversation we just had, which is um, we, we have a goal of reducing math. I would say that everywhere we looked, we looked at is, can we preserve a certified teacher instead of a classroom support um, that is not certified? And that was what we looked at. So the DMG report, if we go back to that, we are trying to implement some aspects of that um, within this budget, is really what it, uh, it, this budget is trying to address. And if we look at our class sizes and our staffing sizes, are they still so reasonable? I, so <laughs> we average about 13 to 14 kids per class across the entire school. The only classes that are under 10 students, when we look, this is the report as of today, um, when we look at the, the number of kids in class, the number of classes or the classes where we have less than 10 kids, they're support classes, so math support or reading support, and they usually are in the six to nine student range, or our AP classes in um, AP Stat, AP Calculus, Chemistry 2 and um, AP Physics and Bio. This is actually, I would consider, more of an anomaly of this year than the long term trends in the AP classes. We just have a smaller enrollment in AP this year in those classes than we, we've had traditionally. Um, but they're all under 10, if, just so we're clear on which classes. Are those classes likely to be above 10 next year? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. So U32 is not one of the schools that, that's at the threshold, is yeah, that correct? It isn't right now, but when the bond payment goes away, you'll yeah. be right at it. Okay. Because the difference of what's above the threshold right now and the bond payment is less than $100,000, and just the medical increases this year okay. were around 100000 so. Uh, this is perverse. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Was, we're not anticipating any new information that would <coughs> put us over the threshold the next uh, well, I will tell you, as I said in there, I don't know that our equalized pupils, it's done in-house. Michelle and Lori are really good, but we're having a hard time getting information from AOE. They have not met a timeline with many different things with budget that they usually do this time of year. They're just they're overwhelmed with work. They don't have a staff down there that they used to have. They've been cut. So, um, so last question is that, um, <coughs> so this draft of the budget, does it see significantly impact student learning in a negative way on a budget basis? I would have to say no based upon the, the goals of the board. But I do not believe that it does. Okay. It speaks to preserving teachers. Correct. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the thing. I mean, when we were talking and doing this work last week, it was let's go right to the DMG report. We're going to try to do a little more gradually, um, but to say, you know, we're putting in, we're keeping teachers. Yeah. And then I guess my question is, you're keeping teachers, but are those teachers able to 
meet the needs of the kids without that classroom support. And I know the DMG report says that classroom teachers do it better, but I know from experience if you have some support in there, they can do, if you're differentiating, you've got someone who can do a group, maybe it's the highest kids or the kids that are most, you know, have, a, I don't know, and the teacher works with another group of kids. Right. I would offer that the classroom support is usually, you usually will see someone else in that classroom who's there for one-on-one -on -one support in many of those same classes. And so what we have to do is we have to help our one-to-one -one, uh, people um, work with other students as well um, so that they're not just focused on that one kid for the entire time if possible. But I will say this, that it does require teachers to, um, to differentiate, you know, be stronger at differentiation within their education their education. I would say that for the last two years that we've been working on our teachers with project-based learning, which is something that helps do that, like we've, we've been doing the things to try to improve and help them improve their own instruction. And if you have one-on-one -on -one assistance, are those U32 people or are they Washington County Mental Health no, people? We're both. We're well, well, I, don't, I don't have any Washington right. County Mental they Health BIs right now, do I? Do I don't know of any. Only. Not, not, not yet, yeah, probably. It's because the. Or the pod people there. Do, do, do. Yeah, I don't think you do. No. Yeah. And for a one on one, that obviously is in a child's IEP. Correct. And so it's sometimes tricky to get the them to work mm -hmm. with other kids. And sometimes mm -hmm. because the kids' needs are so high that they have a one on one, Correct. that you need to be with that kid. Sure. You know, speaking from experience, yes. if you turn your back on this kid to help this kid, mm -hmm. the reason he has a one-on-one -on -one becomes very apparent. <laughs> um, just a, this is a small thing, but I'm just, I'm still thinking how to make Kari happy with a 2.99. Um, there was uh, a new tech services um, entry, $30,000. Uh, that is mostly software, and I think we're actually going to be able to reduce that down a little. Really? Actually. But uh -huh. yeah, it's um, mostly software, is, is what that cost was. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, something miserable. The whole thing is scary. Do you guys have but that questions? passes for happy these days. Carl? Yeah, just just a, so a clarification, or just so I'm clear on what we're talking about. So it's a a position of retirement and food service Correct. that will remain unfilled, and then there's a support person that will be cut. There will be cut. multiple positions. Okay, multiple. So when we, so can you be more specific as to multiple positions? How many? Um, so one of them is definitely a position that was coming to us from Berlin. We won't fill it right here. You know, so right. the kid moves. They tell us to add one more person into our budget to cover that kid. We will use the existing personnel for that and not fill the position. Um, so it is, a t all total, it's a cut of probably six positions. Oh, wow. And they'll all support those paraeducators? Yes. Okay. Do they know it's a possibility? No. no. Okay, thanks. This is one draft of the budget. Yeah. No, I know. Is there anything else we should know? I, I will say that the one thing that, the surprise in our budget to us was the increase in the CDCC tuition. A 12% we, increase. Yeah, We've watched our complaint. They, they, got their, yeah, they heard from two of us. I actually missed negotiations some, as Carl knows. On Monday, that's where I was coming out yeah. and lodging yeah. the complaint of. We got they're, it. they're going to have 185,000 and 117,000 of it here at Washington Central. For how many kids? We have 25 kids currently at CBCC, but we are paying for 31 students next year because of the six semester average. So last year we had 32, the year before we had 37, and the year before that we had 36. So we're paying on the average of those three years right now, 
and now this next year we'll be paying on the average of this year and the previous two. So our, our overall cost is going to decline because of our 25 kids that we have now, but it's going to take uh, a little while before that actually gets us. Who else is paying the other part of that increase? Distributed amongst the other four supervisory yeah. unions. Probably Barry's got the second highest. Because just so you, you have to look at the number of kids and where they're Is Harwood from. one of them? Harwood's okay. one of them that's going to, but you know, they could have a decrease in student population. And because of the state statute that requires the way the funding works, I mean, this is all statute driven for tech centers at six semester average, that, um, you know, Harwood, some, some of those SUs or some of those high schools could see actually lower costs when we have ours increasing. They gave it to us Monday. I didn't bring it with me what the different, what the changes were in each school. What are the chances they appeal? What they um, appeal? I, I, right. You, that you lodged appeal? a complaint. Uh, or what? Well, a complaint. We don't. We actually yeah. complain. We, okay. we actually don't yeah. set the budget. We don't. We we yes. just we're the RAB. The, we sit on the RAB and can recommend, but it's set by the. Uh, well, be the Newberry School District. We'll set it. Twelve percent increase. Yeah, and it's actually budget to budget. It's an eighteen percent increase. Um, from last year's budget to this year's budget. And that budget's set. They set it already? They haven't set it yet. Oh, okay. They're going to, I guess there's some other means. I had to leave early. To be December, he had to leave. I kept up the complaints. <laughs> um, and so, but the, we, we do have another meeting in December to, um, the, the, the regional advisory board has to recommend it. Um, How can they justify that that's percent what increase? Saying. Where, yeah, where's that going? <laughs> so, I mean, they have, are they hiring new staff? They have some staff. They're increasing. Um, they're increasing their um, co-op coordinator from yep. point two to full time. Um, they are not. There was no indication of any cuts. No, they've and, used in previous years. They've used fund balance to cut their tuition. They're not doing this this year, or as much. They are using it a little bit. They using it a little bit. Yeah, but, but not, not to what they used to. And they have a declining. Well. Their enrollment's declining slightly. So they're at about 100, they're, the number that was given there that they're basing the budget on is 143 kids. So we, some of the, so yeah. I would say, I mean, it's really a report to the board. This kind of, this is kind of a carryover between those two. I would say that, um, that there are a lot of factors that go into this. Like it's not a clear cut as to who, you know how it all happens. Um, I would say that uh, from our perspective, we have a declining number of students who are going there at the same time that they're increasing their program. That's an added cost to us. Um, one of our other complaints is that um, the tuition that we pay there is for uh, what essentially is a three quarter day. Um, students do not go full day from this school to there. They actually come back to us for one class each day. Um, and so if we compare their tuition to the tuition of other um, tech centers, that is not an apples to apples comparison because some of the other tech centers are full day programs. So even though their tuition may look similar uh, to some of those programs, those programs are full day. So the kids get all of their education at the tech center. Randolph is one of them. That's a full day program. Um, Lemoyle, Lemoyle is a full day. Program. Is a full day program, and so um, so we have some issues with that. Is that our kids are sent back to us, um, and we have to educate them. You know, we, we're responsible for that, um, even though we're not able to, of course, increase our spending. Um, at so do we well, not so. get state money for them? We, it goes kids. straight back into so the state money that we get goes straight back in and then we have additional funds that have to go in as well so our state funds are really a pass through mm -hmm. yeah it's pretty much what it is yeah. and and then we have to raise an additional two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in our budget to cover the additional costs um, that's not an increase but that's the budgeted line that we have so yeah it was the, it was our single biggest um, Hit. Yeah. Um, as, as other than our salary and our health care, which <laughs> barely came under health care. Yeah, that's true. Because health care is 132. Yeah.
So any other questions? People comfortable with this? Yeah. Was that latest draft? Do you want something different? Do you want more information? I, I still worry about the, the fund balance, that it, it, it has grown, I would say, healthy, but maybe too healthy. It starts to look a little bit slushy Correct. after a certain point. So I know it's... We're, we're about to, yeah, um, you have an action item that's going to take care of a big part of that. Um, and so, uh, and then that would be moving into a capital expense. And we recognize that. I would also say that a big part of our fund balance increase has been on the backs of tuition kids. Um, so we have 71 students who are tuitioned into U32 right now. Um, we budget for less than that. We, we budget for 50. Four, I think it's 54. I think is what we budgeted for in our next budget. Um, we look, if you recall, we no longer receive Roxbury students who accounted for, currently we have 10 students in the school from Roxbury. That's about $180,000. Um, that we graduate four next year and then two each year um, after that until they're they're gone. And we don't replace and them. And there's no replacement yeah. for those kids. And when we look at Washington and Orange, which send the bulk of the students to us, um, their class sizes are 20 or less um, in almost all of their grade levels, K through 8 this year. So there are 19 students in the 8th grade in the Orange Washington system. And so if all 19 kids came, we would preserve even because we have 17 tuition students who will be graduating this year. Um, but the odds of every kid from Orange and Washington coming here is extremely low. And so we're going to start seeing the same decline in our tuition students that we see overall. Um, so. Yeah, and that's been most of the reason why the fund balance. And, and so we, there's not going, that really is all to say that that fund balance is going to go away. Right. Right, that, that <laughs> difference is going to be gone. Okay. In fact, over and the long term, we'll need to reduce our reliance on tuition students even more. And we wanted, and that, that was, was sort of a goal. Yeah. We actually you know, five it years even ago. from last year to this yep. year based upon the numbers that we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. okay. Can we talk about the forum? That's my next thing. Cool. So I've been working on updating slides. And I just wanted to run some things by you and ask a couple of questions. So I was gonna, I'm modeling it on last year's. We'll go through the background information, talk about the budgeting process. It's always a good opportunity to talk about the mission, um, some of our performance, and the plan. I was even going to include um, the math target, you know, to show people, you know, where we're heading with this. And then talk a little bit about trends and, and student enrollment is an important trend. Then get into the draft budget that we just reviewed, and I'll summarize that, um, you know, at a pretty high level, I think. Oh, question. Scott, do you want to do the macroeconomic stuff? This I, I'm, I, I love that sort of thing. If, if everybody is willing to humor me with that, <laughs> I'm... I, I mean, it provides, it's part of the context. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Um, should I send it to you? Yeah, I have la from last year. Do you, oh, send I me have, whatever you want. I have a new... Yeah, great. A new show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Way then um, <laughs> basically presenting at just a really high level view of draft budget number two, there's, there's doesn't seem to be a reason to include a menu of budget reduction options at this stage because we're kind of at the target that we established. Um, so then I was just going to move into questions and comments and here's what I have. What questions do you have? This is for the audience. What is your reaction to this information? So really general, right? And then, are we properly balancing impacts on the students in school um, and with, and taxpayers? And we won't have tax information in two weeks. Bill, mm -hmm. sorry, we say, we're trying okay. to yeah. make sure we have our <coughs> notes in a row for what has to go on next. Will we have any tax information in two weeks for a community um, forum? I can give you a little preview right now. <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. I know yeah, I was, it's not. Totally I want confirmed. I want Kari to finish what he was doing, but I just wanted. Well, that, yeah, I mean, that. maybe there's a better way to to weigh that or uh, word that, but 
something about are we properly balancing the impacts? Mm. You know, yeah. and being fair to the students and being fair to the taxpayers as best we can. Yeah. Thoughts? And Sound good? Oh, it sounds great. It sounds yeah. great. And we'll do it right at 6 o'clock. Okay. And we will have a hearing at 5.30 that oh, okay. Krista got the quorum for us last week and forgot to call. And she apologized profusely. Yeah, she felt she terrible. Oh, the, she felt terrible. They didn't she, know that we had She quorum. forgot to call. Uh -huh. No, she, she said she was so focused on making sure we had a quorum, then she got the quorum and she didn't think, oh, now I need to call the people and so tell them we got a quorum. Had, so they right, didn't know. Right, they didn't know to show They weren't, them. right. So she apologized profusely and I didn't want to do it tonight because I knew it would be a disaster. So. It was one of the most ha enjoyable half hours. It was, it was and I, I, I told her that. I said, you know, it's okay. We had a lovely meal and a lovely discussion, and we all make mistakes sometimes. Usually a half an hour is enough, but we want to make sure it's enough, um, given that we have guests coming. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm going to keep it to half an hour. Okay. This, this is what night? December 19th, so it's two yeah, weeks so from tonight. So 5.30, Don't be late. we have a hearing. Don't be late. And we, I will just, I'll say, we only have this much time. We have a form, and we'll figure it out. That sounds great. Okay. Do you need help, or are you all set? Well, I'm going to send it to Bill to update a couple of the data points. And, uh, and, and Scott will give you his part. Okay. Yeah. Thank you Thanks. very much. Yeah. That's really great. Do we want to hear tax information tonight, or have we had enough? It's 10 after 9. Can it wait? Do you I can, care? I can wait. <laughs> the longer we wait, the more information right. we have. Yeah. Right? Why don't you and I work on something for a slide on the taxes? So okay. Yeah. That's what people want to know, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The problem right now is, with the, I told you we had districts in the penalty, so it's kind of like, I know they're changing their budgets, too. Right. So, so let's not even talk about it tonight. Yeah. Okay. And we have to. I, I guess I would like to know this for the presentation. Would you like to see the, the differential between a merged and the individual or just do it as individual? Individual. I think that's just too much complication for uh, people who have okay. their hands around it. I just want to make sure we're, we've been running those for a while. Is it really different? Uh, it's actually surprising. Then don't. Thirty-two. No, no, I'm talking for everybody. Really? It's not that much difference. I would just hmm. go with what right now. That's good to hear. I mean, this is a draft budget forum that we're going to end up probably making a recommendation. And yeah. Be up to the next board to yep. actually present it. Reports to the board. Central Vermont Career Service. Did we just get that report? You just got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Student reps, we had administration? Five. I've been working on budget. Okay. Finance, we just got. Executive committee hasn't met. Policy okay. committee, we met on Monday. We didn't have a quorum, so we worked on the charge, as Lindy said. We also looked at a bunch of um, one required policy. Shoot. <laughs> What's the required? There was a new required policy. It's a required it's about, policy on, on student media. That's right. Press. Yep. And student that press. And freedom of speech. Two and or three weeks ago on freedom of speech and, yep. what they, and what they can publish. And then we looked at a bunch of recommended policies and had those up against the policies that the school, all the different schools now have and trying to figure out the similarities and differences and hope that we can just go to one recommended policy. A lot of the ones that are on the books are very old, 1998, 2002, 2004. Um, so we still have more work to do on that. School quality did not meet. Negotiations? Nothing to add to what Shawnee said earlier. Okay. Um, so action agenda, approve a capital budget transfer. So we're asking that the board approve $500,000 from the fund balance to capital for our um, track project. From fund balance to capital. Um, Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Scott, and a second? I'll second. Jonathan, discussion? This is what we've been talking about for the last couple months. Correct. And the hope, the hope is that we won't have to 
we'll be able to pay for it. No bond or anything. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All those in. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Please go on. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. The pre qualification criteria we looked at last week, yep. were there any changes to no. that? No, you asked me a couple of questions, Adrian. Yeah. Thank you. Answered them satisfactorily. Yep. Um, do people need to look at it again? Are you okay? So, a motion to accept the pre qualification criteria that we looked at last week for the track improvements? So moved. Scott, Seconded. Carl, discussion on that one? All those in favor say aye. 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 Somebody was going to say something. You were going to say something. I am going to say something now, which is okay. um, so as a result of you doing this, we will also need to make sure that this board meets. Um, so our architects and our engineers are going to need the board to meet in the January. Am I correct? We have a January 2nd board yes. meeting. For yes. That's an important <laughs> board meeting for us to, um, because we'll need to, um, oh, well, You'll have to pre-qualify the, the companies that can bid so that the bid cycle will start at the right time. Isn't everybody going to work on January 2nd anyway? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What does it mean to pre-qualify? So what you've essentially done is you've set the standards of the companies that can pre-qualify oh. for bid. the project. And then those companies, you will then certify that these companies, and, and they're going to be extensively reviewed by our <coughs> Our architect and engineer, um, and and they will say, here's the companies that meet your pre-qualifications. You will approve those companies, and those companies then can bid on the project. But the caveat here in this process is the company that comes in with the lowest bid is awarded the project automatically. Automatically, mm -hmm. unless that, there's like it, a one percent. Unless there's yeah. within one percent, right? Right, and then yeah. we have to make decisions. But um, so the. Pre-qualification is the important part of all of this. All right. The companies that you pre-qualify, you don't want to pre-qualify, and this is why it's well written and done by our architects, by architects and engineers, is because if you pre-qualified a company that was substandard and they came in with a low bid, um, you would have you to accept have choice. Yeah. But we don't really play much of a role. No, in no, that. this is no. where this is where you lean, and this is for every building yeah, renovation. Yeah, this is where you lean on an architect, our clerk of the work, who's part of this bill forward and our engineers, because they have experience working with these companies. Yeah. Are they going to provide a letter or something? Yeah, yeah. They, well, knowing John, he'll be here. He'll be here. Okay. okay. I'm just, he's got a lot of work. And can we make a motion to approve the creation of an Act 49 committee and then um, add the membership of CARI to that committee, the motion? <laughs> Anybody want to do that? That's what, um, what's his name? Matt, Matt was talking about right. in there. And I'm not going to go through all the details. I think we can just approve this. the next this. iteration of right. the articles committee. That's exactly. So a motion to approve the um, creation of an Act 49 committee and appoint Kari Bradley to do it. So moved. Carl, in a second. Okay, George. And Kari said and he would be willing to continue Kari, to do that. Yes. Yeah. So, discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Board orders? Is there a motion to approve them? I saw them somewhere. I already put them away. Sorry. Lisa, do you need so. the number? I think so. 42,391 and 33 cents. Let me check it with my glasses. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Yes. I can't take mine off. So 42,391 33. Motion to accept those? So moved. And a second? Second. Scott? Questions about them? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Future agenda items. <laughs> Budget. Yeah. Board communication. We need to do a, <coughs> excuse me, front porch forum. I, I can do that. And I'm, I'm certainly making the announcement about the Form. I think that's the most important part of that. And I think it would be good for us to post twice, you know, like yep. once in the next week and then once the week after that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Anything else we want to include in that from the past month? 
Have we passed, said that we passed our flag policy? We did last we, time. We yeah. did that, okay. I think we're good. Mm -hmm. Just focus on that. Yep. That's it. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Come spend yep. them with us. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>